Satan likes to hinder our gratitude with all kinds of obstacles. I suggest four such obstacles in the book. First, when we rightly understand the gospel, and I will admit I struggle with this one the most, our gratitude can be diminished as we consider the lostness of our dear friends and loved ones, and we can allow it to consume us. We counter this by being ever more grateful for God's kindness in saving us as we continue to pray for others and we trust our sovereign God is indeed at work. Secondly, how common is it for us to be so busy, even busy doing kingdom work, that gratitude gets pushed aside? We almost act like we will save it for when we are in our rocking chairs in our old age and reminiscing about life. Scripture does not teach that. It is replete with references to praise the Lord and be thankful. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are to abound in thanksgiving. There's to be no delay for busyness. Thirdly, sometimes we allow discontent over circumstances to rob us of both our joy and gratitude. If only things were different, we think. But God's word is so clear. 1 Thessalonians 5 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Fourthly, doubt and guilt can plague us and hinder gratitude. We lose sight of the truth that we were bought with a price. Scripture teaches us in Jude that Christ will present us blameless before the presence of His glory with great joy. How can we not overflow with gratitude for that? Music